What is up you guys? It's Maddie. Welcome back to my channel. Today, or should I say tonight, we're gonna be doing something a little different. I am going to be listening to and reacting to The Torture Poets Department by Taylor Swift. <laughs> Yes, the rumors are true. I am in fact a huge Taylor Swift fan, a Swifty as you would call us. As someone who was raised on country music by a very Southern mother, I was so lucky to discover Taylor at the very start of her career when she first came out with her debut album. Long story short, I have pretty much been a fan of Taylor for her entire career. Kind of fell off, you know, when I was in high school because I was trying to be one of those little edgy scene kids who was like, Dude, Taylor Swift is kind of loser. The woman is an amazing songwriter. Like, are you really gonna let a label stop you from enjoying good music. Anyways, it is 11.45 on the dot. I am awake, I am anxious. I have so many feelings about this album. I have so much excitement about this album. I think it's gonna be incredible. I'm excited for it. I think it's gonna be something we haven't seen from Taylor before. I have my Sony over the ear noise canceling headphones because I quite literally don't want to hear a single Thing, but Taylor, I don't want to hear anything else. Once those go on, I want the entire world to leave me alone. For a refreshment tonight, we have a white wine, a Pinot Grigio, if you will. The cheap ass screw top kind, served a la Taylor over ice. <laughs> Oh, she smells good. Fun fact, this Pinot Grigio in particular, the brand is called Rika's Castle. They are from Transylvania, in case anyone cares. That is delightful. God, I love a good crisp Pinot Grigio, okay? We're gonna be in shambles tonight, you guys. I cannot believe we're getting another Taylor Swift album. I remember like it was yesterday when I first listened to Midnight's. I was still working 4 a.m. shifts at Target, so I actually woke up at 3 a.m. So I was awake to see that the 3 a.m. edition had been released and I listened to it on the way to work. And I just remember driving downtown, hearing the intro of Lavender Haze for the first time and being like, oh shit. I truly love Midnight. It is honestly top three in my album rankings from Taylor Swift. We will see if that changes after tonight. I'm anticipating that it might because this album sounds like it is going to be very heavy, like emotionally heavy. I do just also want to say beforehand, I know that certain unsavory things have come out about the particular ex-boyfriend that this album is about. And if those things are true, that is very unfortunate if I'm being quite honest, because I know that he meant the world to her and that relationship meant a lot to her and changed her life in a lot of ways. And she really thought that she was gonna settle down and get married to this guy. So like, we always say that the universe brings people into our lives for a reason. And sometimes they're only there for a season. And I think this is just one of those cases. I think he was brought into her life at a very specific point in time that she needed someone who could bring her a sense of normalcy to her life. Please keep in mind, she seems to be in a much better place now. And she is in a new relationship with someone who seems to be making her very, very happy. And I love that for her as well. She's probably worked through a lot of the emotions that we are going to experience through this album. She's not asking us to go to war for her over any of her exes or anybody from her past that we think may have hurt her based on assumptions through the lyrics in her songs. Focus our energy on supporting Taylor and being excited about this new album that she's giving us because no matter what phase of life I'm in, no matter what kind of music I am or am not into at the time, it always comes back to Taylor Swift. I quite literally always come back to her. She is one of my favorite artists of all time for a reason. She is a phenomenal songwriter. Her songs are so raw and emotional emotional and show just how much of a capacity she has for love and how determined she is to find love in a world that is quite literally very loveless at times. I just feel like society definitely side eyes people like that because, you know, everything is about us and protecting ourselves and we all build up these walls and we don't want to let anybody in. So to be vulnerable and open to love and to giving and receiving love is such a brave thing to do this day and age, I feel like, because I think she is a genuinely kind person and I think she cares about her fans so much. She does so much for us. It's absolutely incredible. And it kind of sucks that people just think that it's all fake and it's just an act. I'm going to get off my high horse. Anyways, now that that's out of the way, let me share with you guys my predictions for my top five favorite songs from the Tortured Poets department. These are the songs that based on the track list alone and nothing else, because I don't listen to leaks, you losers. These are the songs that based on the track list alone, I think are going to really resonate with me or I'm just really going to vibe with for whatever reason. And I have four minutes to do it because it is 11.56, you guys. I am literally screaming. First, one being So Long London. I truly think that this song is going to parallel Cornelia Street in so many ways because Taylor truly found a home in London and the person that lived there that she loved. And I think this song is going to be the antithesis to that song. And as someone who very much loves Lover, I'm going to be heartbroken. The second one is going to be But Daddy, I Love Him. Um, 
Look, I got daddy issues, all right? This one was just a given. This one actually is fresh out the slammer. I saw somebody tweet about how this song is probably gonna have the vibes of Nicole Kidman after she finalized her divorce, and I just honestly think that is so true. I think this song is just literally going to be one of those bad bitch anthems. Number four is Down Bad. I feel like this could potentially go two ways. I feel like this could be her like down bad in her grief over the loss of this relationship, the breakup that she was experiencing, or maybe Travis Kelsey is actually going to get his first song debut on this album and maybe it's about her crushing hard on him and being down bad for him. Either way, I think I'm going to with it. Last one is LOML, aka love of my life. I'm excited to see if she switches this up and maybe says some different words instead of love of my life. Maybe she'll say like loss of my life. Hi, editing Maddie here. I don't know how I forgot to include this one, but I also predicted I can do it with a broken heart would be not just one of my top five favorites, but I did predict this one to be my number one favorite of the entire album. Anyways, enjoy this little montage of me listening and reacting to some of the songs on this album. I don't know, I'm excited. But anyways, that being said, you guys, it is 11.58. I cannot believe that this is happening. The only snacks I have are my um, Medjool date Snickers that I made like a week ago that I need to eat. <sighs> I can't breathe. Oh my God, I can't breathe. This is really happening. I I'm gonna close out all of my apps. I'm just gonna close out Spotify, okay? We're gonna like, oh my God. God, you guys, we get a new Taylor Swift album in one minute. 12 o'clock, it's 12 o'clock. What do I wanna listen to? I wanna listen to Taylor Swift. I wanna listen to Taylor Swift, baby. Oh my God. <gasps> Oh my god, it's here! Oh my god, I'm I'm so nervous. I don't know what to expect. Ready? Oh my god, it's buffering. It's not playing yet. Come on, baby, you can do it. It's buffering, you guys. It's buffering so long. Everyone in the world is trying to listen to this right now. Oh come on, let me listen to Taylor, please. Okay, I'm closing out Spotify. I'm gonna try it again. Everybody else is listening to this. I can't hear it. Y'all, my Spotify app is not working. It's not working right now. I do not know what is happening. It is literally buffering. I will literally restart my Apple Music subscription. Oh, it's playing. Y'all, this song is gonna get- Oh my god, this song is getting me. This album. All right, we have gotten to down bad. We have gotten to one of the first of the five that I predicted would be a favorite. So let's find out if down bad is indeed a favorite. Ooh. I was right, I was right. This one is such a favorite, oh my God. Okay, So Long London is next. I repeat, So Long London is next. Down Dad, definitely a favorite. God, I love that song so much. But um, So Long London is next. And this one of the five, I think is gonna wreck me the most. So, let's do it. Oh my God, the production on this. So, um, So Long London may have broken me. I'm definitely gonna have to listen to that one again, but I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna go to the next track, which is But Daddy, I Love Him. Okay, But Daddy, I Love Him is definitely a favorite. I need more wine. Oh my god, are you serious right now? Oh my god, love of my life just started and it's a very sad piano tune. I'm not gonna be okay for this. I'm literally, oh my god, I'm so down bad for this album actually. Oh, we're in the second half of the album, okay. Oh my god, all of these songs are gonna hurt me. I'm not okay. Oh my god, I'm not okay. Oh, she did it, she did it. Oh my god.
So it's the next day and I have been through a lot. <laughs> Oh my God, I am suffering. I am never getting over this album. I cannot believe we got a double album drop. I literally cannot believe this. Oh my God, I just wanna thank the universe for allowing me to be alive at the same time as Taylor Swift so that I could experience this album. You guys, oh my God. This album is so personal and raw and heartbreaking. Like, okay, before I even get into everything, let's talk about my top five. Let's see if my top five was correct because I can't believe we got a double album. You guys, I'm literally losing my mind over here. I look like an egg. I literally look like an egg. I just got back from the gym. I was listening to the original release during my workout at the gym. I started the second half right about the time I was getting on the treadmill, which was perfect because I wanted to be able to actually focus on the lyrics. So my predicted top five songs from the Tortured Poets department were number one, I can do it with a broken heart. This one actually holds, okay? I absolutely love this song. This song, in my opinion, is quite literally such a good summation of everything she has been going through for the last couple of years while she was writing this album. Because when you think about it, like we all knew she was working her way through a breakup while she was on tour, but it wasn't just a break of this, like I'm literally speechless. I don't even know if I know how to like phrase what I'm trying to say right now, but the fact that she was grieving and trying to mourn the loss of a relationship that she thought was going to span the rest of her life. Like she thought she was gonna marry this man. All of it comes crumbling down. And then she has to go on this tour where she's performing all of her life's work. And she literally just has to smile and fake her way through it. I mean, oh my God. Someone I follow on Twitter, I literally follow the Twitter user that originally posted this video that started circulating on TikTok and it was this one. The Eras Tour Florida dates occurred immediately after the news broke of the breakup. So I believe this video is from one of those dates. This song is that moment just amplified, like down bad, having the worst time of her life because she is grieving and mourning this relationship. But at the same time, she has to smile and fake her way through it because this is the most incredible year for her career wise that she has ever experienced in her entire life. And just, just the contrast of your greatest loss and your greatest achievement together like that in a song. Oh my God. I, oh my God. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, I, this one stands. I can do it with a broken heart is quite honestly the gem of this album. It is number one in my heart for me. And I love you so much, Taylor. I'm so glad you're doing better. Oh my God. This album hurts so hard. Number two was LOML or love of my life. This one, I'm not sure that I would put at number two, but it definitely is still top five for me. This one really hurt. <laughs> I have so many things going on in my head. I need to actually just like look up the lyrics of these songs. I feel like this song kind of parallels to You Are In Love, particularly these lyrics. If you know it in one glimpse, it's legendary. You and I go from one kiss to getting married. I just, I don't know. I Maybe it's just me, but I just feel like that song kind of went hand in hand with You Are In Love. And it was almost like the antithesis of it when you realize like, when you realize somebody who you believed you were in love with and was the love of your life is the loss of your life. I literally, I love this song. So much. I literally was wondering if she would mess with that anagram. Is it called an anagram? I don't actually know. I'm not a English major. I love that she changed it to loss of my life. I had a feeling she was going to play with those words a little bit because with something like an anagram, is it called an anagram? I need to know. Acronym. Oh my God. It was acronym. Acronym was the word I was looking for. Okay. Sorry. Like I said, I'm not an English major. I don't know anything, <laughs> but yeah, LOML, I definitely think is potentially still top five, but I don't think it's number two at all. Three I put as I can fix him. No, really I can. And I gotta say this one didn't make it to my top five. Don't get me wrong. I loved pretty much every song on the first edition release of the album, which is the white cover release that was initially released at 12. I will do a separate top five for the double release just because there's so many songs, I don't feel like it's right to only pick five for all 30 of them. These five are solely referring to the 12 a.m. initial release that we knew about before all hell broke loose. I definitely don't believe I can fix him. No, really, I can is number three. That one, that one was good. It just didn't make it to top five for me. Number four, So Long London. Oh, besties. 
This song was such a punch in the gut for me. If I'm being quite honest, I think this song is, I wanna say this song is probably about number two or three for me, I think. If I'm being quite honest, I don't think I'm even gonna be able to give you guys like an actual honest top five ranking right now because I think I need to listen to this album like 30 more times before I can even like honestly judge or rank any of them. Like this album is so expansive. Like this is such an intense album. But the lyrics in this one, actually literally just pulled him in tighter each time he was drifting away. My spine split from carrying us up the hill. Literally like textbook holding on to a relationship that you know is falling apart and you need to leave, but you're trying so hard to keep it together because like you've put so much time and effort into it. Oh my God. And then the callback to you're losing me. I stopped CPR after all it's no use. The spirit was gone. We would never come to, which obviously if you've noticed in you're losing me continuously throughout the background of that song is a literal recording of Taylor's heartbeat. The part of the song that actually had me on the floor and like had me ready to break down in tears was you swore that you loved me, but where were the clues? I died on the altar waiting for the proof. You sacrificed us to the gods of your bluest days. And I'm just getting back the color into my face. I'm just mad as hell. Cause I loved this place. Oh my God. I'm not okay. I remember when Lover came out in 2019 and everyone on Twitter was screaming, Taylor Swift is literally getting married this year. Everybody thought this was it. But to go from that to this, oh my God, like it, it just hurts. It's, it's giving, how long did you wait for your partner to finally own up and commit to this relationship and commit to you when in reality they were never going to? Also, you sacrificed us to the gods of your bluest days. It's giving peace. I'm a fire and I'll keep your brittle heart warm when your cascade ocean wave blues come. She would be there even on his darkest, bluest, stormiest days. And she gave him her passion, her fire, and her light to prove that. But at the end of the day, sometimes your best just isn't enough. And it just kind of really highlights the fact that sometimes you can love someone as hard as you can, but if it's not meant to be and they don't love you back the same, you, you just can't change that fundamentally. And also, I'm just mad as hell because I loved this place. She's kind of pissed. She's not going to be able to ever visit London again without thinking of this person that she loved and also the fact that she quite literally had a second home in London. She lived in London for a really long period of time. She made a home out of this city and now she will never be able to go back without feeling that grief and sadness. And I'm honestly excited to see what surprise songs she has in store for their London shows because I can see this being a mashup with Cornelia Street. And the song that I thought would be number five in my top five it was Down Bad. And this is another one that made it to my top five still. I love Down Bad. Bad. I think this one is like number three for me. I am a really big fan of those really upbeat songs that sound very happy and fun, but then when you listen to the lyrics, they just cut your heart out. This was such a good song. Okay, I'm sorry. And also, let's be real. This one was made for the gym rats, okay? Gym rats rise. This is our song. We are down bad crying at the gym. It just encapsulates perfectly that like that anger that you feel when you're fresh out of a relationship and you're just angry at that other person because it didn't work out. Oh, it's so good. God, I love of this song. I need some hand lotion. So those were the songs that I predicted to be my top five. I really tried to go into this album with absolutely no expectations because from the jump, I just knew this album was going to be different than anything she had ever released. Like I knew this was going to sound different. I knew it was going to be deeper and more emotional and just hit me harder in the gut and the heart and everything. Listening to this album is not enough. I need to shove this entire album up my ass. But anyways, my semi-official top five. Again, I'm not gonna call this my official top five just because I feel like this album is so complex and deep that I think after about like 30 or more listens, I will probably change these a little bit. As of right now, my top five from the Tortured Poets department in no particular order, because again, I don't feel like I can rank this album right now. I don't feel like I have truly listened to this album enough to definitively say these are my top five and this is the order I would put them in. These are just the top five that I find myself really enjoying right now. First and foremost, I can do it with a broken heart. I'm gonna scratch what I just said for a second. This one is my number one and it is gonna be my number one. This, absolutely love this one for all my aforementioned reasons, this one is number one. This is the only one that is actually number one and I can confirm that. Number two, down bad. Number three, but daddy, I love him. This one is just, it's it's so fun, but just something about this song, it just has some venom to it almost. Like it has a bite. I'd rather burn my whole life to the ground than listen to one more second of all this bitching and moaning. I'll tell you something about my good name. It's mine alone to disgrace. I don't cater to all these vipers dressed in empaths clothing. Like, 
I think it's a very good song. I love the energy of it. But if I'm being quite honest, the final chorus, I love the final chorus of this song even more because in my opinion, it feels very Travis Kelsey coded. Now I'm dancing in my dress in the sun and even my daddy just loves him. I'm his lady and oh my God, you should see your faces. Time doesn't it give you some perspective and no, you can't come to the wedding. I know it's crazy, but he's the one I want. This song just made it to top five for me. Anyways, I'm gonna shut up because I have so many feelings about this song. What number? am I on even? Okay, number four is Florida. Three exclamation points. With Florence and the Machine? Are you kidding me? This song was so fire, you guys. This song was so good. Florida. It was just that beat in the chorus. The production on this album was absolutely incredible. We need to give our flowers to Aaron Dressner and Jack Antonoff where it's due. The lyrics in this song are just so good. Especially Florence's verse. Oh my god. Hurricane with my name when it came. I got drunk and dared it to wash me away. Barricaded in the bathroom with a bottle of wine. Well, me and my ghosts, we had a hell of a time. Like, I need these two to do another song. Oh my god. Taylor, please get Florence on another song. And the bridge. Oh my god. I'm sorry, but Taylor Swift is the queen of bridges and I will die on this hill. And I really enjoy the comparison of the grief and the anger and the loss and all of the emotion that came with her breakup to a literal hurricane. Because if I'm being quite honest, that's what it feels like. When you lose a, a relationship, when you lose someone important in your life, like a hurricane is truly the best way to describe what that like combination of emotions must feel like. And what is number five? Oh God. Number five, I've got to say is The Alchemy. I truly think that The Alchemy is the mastermind of this album. I just feel like the energy and her reflection on it, but she kind of pursued this relationship and she had a plan in the back of her mind of how she wanted it to go. It just feels like a callback to mastermind. I circled you on a map. I haven't come around in so long, but I'm coming back so strong. I just love this song. It's so good and it is so sweet. I know that this was primarily a breakup album and it was dealing with all of the stuff she dealt with in her previous relationships, but I am so happy to see that Travis got a couple songs on this album because honestly, I knew I was gonna love them. As someone who has very much enjoyed seeing how happy he clearly makes Taylor, I was just excited to get some songs that kind of put that into perspective for us. Once again, Taylor Swift is the queen of bridges because the bridge in this song is also one of my favorites, especially where she says, where's the trophy? He just comes running over to me. It is once again, very Super Bowl celebration coded because they just looked so happy in those photos. This was such a good song. This was such a good album. I love you so much, Taylor. Thank you so much for all this new music. Oh my God. <laughs> With that being said, I will briefly address the second half of the album. I've only made it through the second release one time through. I just really needed to sit down and talk about this and get my thoughts out so that I could go back and re-listen to it about like 10 more times. But I will briefly touch on it and share with you what I believe my top five are gonna be on this album. The songs that I am enjoying so far from the double release are So High School. I'm gonna cry. I'm literally gonna cry. I'm so happy to see that even through all of this sadness and this grief that Taylor's been working through, she came out the other side and she is so happy right now. And she is with someone who knows how he feels and what he wants and he wants her. Godspeed to you, Mr. Kelsey. You are a real one. The next one I've been really enjoying is Thank You, Amy. I don't think anybody was surprised. This song, <laughs> Thank You, Amy and Cassandra are actually two of my favorite songs from the double release. And I think between these two, I don't think Taylor's gonna pull any punches on the Reputation Taylor's version vault. These two go so hard. Thank You, Amy is such a savage, brutal way to tell your enemies. No matter what pain you caused me in the past, I came out on top and I built something stronger and more everlasting than you could have ever imagined. If I'm being quite honest, I have been waiting for a song like this. I'm sorry. Everyone knows that my mother is a saintly woman, but she used to say that she wished you were dead. All I gotta say is long live Andrea Swift. <laughs> and on the flip side, Cassandra was just so much deeper and a more in-depth look at how the world treated Taylor in the midst of the Kim and Kanye fiasco. And not just that, but in the aftermath of what happened, and we eventually found out that Kim and Kanye did set Taylor up. Because I do remember when the full version of the phone call was leaked and the truth came out. And Taylor even references it in this song. She said, when it's burn the bitch, they're shrieking. When the truth comes out, it's quiet. It's so quiet. 
it. I literally, it was like no one cared. Nobody was talking about it. I remember seeing like a hashtag Taylor was right, but it's it's quite literally like no one cared because if I'm being quite honest, I will die on this hill. Some people live to hate Taylor Swift. Some people quite literally just make it their personality to hate Taylor Swift. And I think a lot of people are very jealous of that vulnerability. Taylor, despite everything that she's been through, in my opinion, is someone who's still so vulnerable and open to the idea that she is deserving of true happiness and love no matter how much her her anxiety and her demons might try to beat it out of her. Oh, this song was just so good because I was just like, no, that's it. That was, that's it. Yes, say it. Scream it out the window. You were right. They were wrong. The world wronged you. This song was so good for me. I literally loved this song. Number four, The Bolter. This was another one that my boyfriend got to first and he told me I was gonna love it when I heard it. And oh my God, I did. Tell me you have anxious abandonment issues without telling me you have anxious abandonment issues, right? Also at the very end of the chorus, the line where she talks about falling through the ice then came out alive. Also for me, feels like a parallel to long story short when she says, long story short, it was a bad time. Long story short, I survived. I'm literally so in love with this song. And was that four? I think I still have one more to pick. Oh my God. I think for me, the fifth and final favorite from the double release is the manuscript. This was such a beautiful ending to this album. It was such a beautiful way to end a entire novel's worth of songwriting about this relationship, everything it meant to her and all of the pain that came with losing it. This just felt like a very good, like turning of the page, ending the chapter. Only thing that's left is the manuscript. One last souvenir from my trip to your shores. This this, this album is a dedication to a relationship that meant so much to her and the pain and grief that came along with losing it. And this just felt like such a reflective way to end the album, looking back on all of it saying, this is my last souvenir of you, of our time spent together in London, of the six years that I knew you. This is the last thing that she has of that relationship. This is her officially ending this era and saying goodbye to the life she knew before because it's time to start a new era. Era. It's the start of an age. I just think it was such a beautiful way to end this album. I absolutely adored this song. Also, can we be real? He said that if the sex was half as good as the conversation was, soon they'd be pushing strollers, but soon it was over. Oh my God, I am a child of divorce. <laughs> this was just such a good album. If I'm being quite honest, I have been talking for almost a fucking hour now, so I need to literally just shut up. I have had so many thoughts to say about this album, but if I'm being quite honest, I couldn't help it. I just needed to get all of this out. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed my little spill on the Tortured Poets department. And again, these are all just my thoughts and my opinions. These are all my observations. And again, I have listened to this album less than three times over. Like I am still re-listening to this album and I'm going to be for the rest of the day, but I just wanted to get my first initial thoughts out because it'll be fun to come back to later and see how it changes. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for sitting down with me to just talk about Taylor Swift. It is literally my favorite thing. I love talking about Taylor Swift. I just absolutely adore her. She's such a talented songwriter. I really don't care what anyone fucking says. This is gonna be a big album for me. I, I'm i not gonna get over this album. If you are also a fellow Swifty, comment down below your top fives from both the initial Tortured Poets Department release and the, what was the, what was the other half called? Literally, what was the other half of this album called? She called it something. The Anthology, oh my God. Comment down below your favorite from both the Tortured Poets Department and then the Anthology series because I'm very interested to know what you guys are enjoying right now. And with that being said, I am literally gonna get out of here. I'm gonna try and get this video edited so fast so I can go back to listening to this album for like the rest of my life. If you're new here, don't forget to like this video and also subscribe because I do post other non-Taylor Swift content. I love vlogging my silly little life on YouTube and I have a lot of other fun content on my channel if you're interested in more than just my opinions about Taylor Swift. <laughs> that being said, I am gonna go. I will catch you guys later. Have a great rest of your day or night, wherever you are in the world, and I will catch you on my next video. What?